Well, we're coming to the final week in the little sub-series that I've been doing in our Thrive theme. And part of thriving is to take notice of some of the incredible um, messages that have come to us, very short messages from the one-page letters in the Bible. There are four one-page letters. And we have seen that if a one-page letter was written in the New Testament times, it must have been urgent. There were no postal services that we know of. There weren't any easy delivery. There was no internet. And so usually a letter was quite long. We see long letters in the New Testament. But then there are these short letters, one pages. And these indicate that there was something urgent that had to be said and got off very quickly to the local church. We have seen, firstly, from 2 John, that love is urgent. If the church is to thrive, there needs to be genuine love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's the first and greatest commandment. And the second is love your neighbour. God first, neighbour second, and then yourself. How often we get it the wrong way around. Love God, love others, love yourself. Love expressed to others. Then we saw from Philemon that there is an urgency in being reconciled. If you love, then you need to be reconciled where there is conflict and discord. If you are to thrive, that is absolutely vital. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, you shall be called the repairer of the breach. Wouldn't it be lovely if you were known as that today, a repairer of the breach? And then we saw from Jude the urgency of responsibility. It is crucial that you contend for your faith. Don't let anything or anyone come between you and Jesus Christ. The fundamental thing about your faith journey is that you stay with Jesus. Not friends, not family, no one should come between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're looking at the final one-page letter, 3 John the third letter that John wrote of this sort, and this is the really the one-pager, and he said it's urgent, very urgent, that you get hold of this. Who is going to influence you? There's an urgency about influence. Now, when this was written, there was some stuff going on in the church that caused John to write it off quickly so that there would not be a problem with the influence coming upon those Christians. Bible teacher John MacArthur says all leadership seeks to accomplish one goal and that is influence. But before we can positively influence others, we need to make sure we are influenced properly ourselves. And we need to choose with great care those who have the power to shape our thoughts, to manoeuvre our feelings, to change our attitudes and to impact our behaviours. Be very careful who you allow to influence. Solomon said this, do not make friends with a hot-tempered man. We could say person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. He's saying be careful who you get close to because who you get close to will cause an influence upon you. Now, Do you know that it's a proven fact, and um, don't shoot the messenger on this, that if a person gets overweight, they often have been associating with a person who is overweight and being influenced by their eating habits. Now, I'm not saying that you should never be friends with a person who's overweight. That's not what I'm saying today at all. What I'm saying is don't be influenced by their... Choices Now, not all overweight is because of eating. Some is hormones and so on. But where it is an eating issue, then you can be influenced badly if you choose to go that way. You've probably heard also Dr. Dorothy Law Nolte's essay, Children Live What They Learn. If children live with criticism, they'll learn to condemn. If they live with hostility, they'll learn to fight. If they live, learn with fear, they'll, they'll learn to be apprehensive. If they live with pity, they'll feel sorry for themselves. If they live with ridicule, they'll learn to feel shy. And so these things are influences. And this was written as a warning to parents, be careful how you influence your children. 
Now, there's another aspect of being a believer when it comes to influence, and that is sometimes we need to say, I have to decide to unlearn, to unlearn what I have learnt from my childhood upwards. As much as I love my parents and those around me, I have learnt things that actually are negative viewpoints, negative beliefs that are impacting how I'm living now. They're false beliefs, and I'm going to unlearn them. I'm going to be very definite about doing that. And may I say, Search for Life is one marvellous way that you can take that journey to unlearn things that have been holding you firm and problematically. And so let us give some thought to what we need to unlearn. So starting today, we need to say, I'm going to choose a better influence in my life. So how does that happen? Well, sometimes we don't choose. Sometimes we learn inadvertently. In other words, it's a bit like the process of osmosis where you just pick things up and habits and they just come your way and without knowing you've taken on board some influences. Now, I come from Victoria, so you probably still pick up the way I say mall or mal, you say, don't you? Or do I say mal? I've been in South Australia so long now, I don't know. (laughs) But, you know, you pick up these little lilts that are quite significantly different and even though it's small, you pick it up in pronunciation. So my speech has been inadvertently influenced by living 40 years in Victoria. And yet a person who has a job on radio or films as a voiceover, they will not have that that sort of lilt. They will be actual on the spot with no accent problems because they've learned to speak that way. Their job depends upon it. And that's the second way that we can learn, by intention, inadvertently, just as the way it comes, or intentionally. And this is where you say, I will decide who I will be influenced by. I will listen to certain voices and I'll put certain voices aside. So I'm talking today from 3 John about that part, the intentional choice, who you choose to become by whom you listen to and allow to influence you. So let's come to John 3, or 3 John. There are three things in this letter I'm going to point out today. First of all, choose influencers who genuinely care for you. He says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell about your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Now, obviously, John loved and cared for these people. And most of us can remember people who have done that in our life and they've been great influences. Maybe you can remember a teacher who couldn't care less though. A teacher who all they want to do was to give you the facts and couldn't be bothered if you struggled with biology or chemistry or maths or didn't understand the formula. They just gave it out and that was it. But there's other teachers. Other teachers who loved you, cared for you, were passionate about their, their role as a teacher and really understood education. They were the teachers you need to have. They're the ones that you need to choose if you can possibly do a teacher like that. William Ward, William Arthur Ward said this, every person has the power to make others happy. One does it simply by entering a room, another by leaving a room. (laughs) Every chance you get, choose the person who brightens the room by coming in, not the one who brightens it by going out. Whenever I seek a purchase of something, uh, something important to me, like, for example, which iPad to buy or something like that, which is fairly crucial to all the different things that I do, I want a person who cares about, not just wants to make a sale. Someone who cares for me, for what I'm doing, knows the sort of connectivity I need to have and whether I'm travelling or not, so what will work in other countries, I need to know that. Not just someone who's going to just want to get a sale. And that works on a spiritual level as well. We all can read books, we can listen to sermons, we can watch sermons on tally, but we're likely to be influenced best by people who love us. And even when they speak things that are hard and things that are tough, you know their words are motivated by love and so you're likely to take notice of what they say. When you think about who is going to influence your life, your faith, your beliefs, your attitude, always 
intentionally choose people who have shown in action and demonstrated that they genuinely care about you. Now, you can make a good choice if you do that. So here's the second thing. Choose influencers who walk the talk, not just talk the talk. So John says, Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. You will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such men so that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church about Diotrephes, who loved to be first. Isn't it interesting? Some people in the church back there love to have the first place, but have nothing to do with us. So if I come, I will call attention to what he's doing, gossiping and maliciously talking about us, not satisfied with that. He refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. An urgent letter, do not be influenced by such men. Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. God. What's he saying? He's saying, look out for those who walk the talk and do what they say. Several times when Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote letters, he said, imitate me, follow my example, do what I do. And every leader worth their salt must be able to say that by their own example, they need to be demonstrating what they are saying. Now, Drew Manning is a fitness instructor, a trainer who is very, very fit, excellent in shape. And one day he tried a new strategy for people who weren't losing the weight that they needed. He said, I'm going to, for one month, I'm going to eat, no, six months, I'm going to eat everything in sight. So he went to Turkey, ate baklavas and um, Turkish delights and all those lovely little pastries and everything else like that. And he gained 70 pounds in six months. And then he said to his fan base, follow me and do what I do, what I show you to do, and I'll show you how to go from 70 pounds overweight down to the right level. And in six months, he was back in tip-top shape. I didn't read the report of the people who were his fan base. I don't know if they achieved that or not. But the point is that he just also walked the walk, not just talked the talk. In choosing our influences, we must ask the question, does this person practice what they say? Do I see in his life what I see in their words? And there is a good poem about this. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes are better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing, but examples always clear. And the best of all preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see good put in action is what everybody needs. I soon can learn to do it if you'll let me see it done. I can watch your hands in action, but your tongue too fast may run. And the lecture you deliver may be very wise and true. But I'd I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do. For I might misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. Francis Assisi said, preach at all times. If necessary, use words. And so, to be influenced well, you need to look for people who love you and care for you and then people who will actually do what they say. Otherwise, steer clear and don't take too much notice of them. So here's the third thing. Choose influences with a good reputation. So John says, Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone and even by the truth itself. In other words, truth lines up with his words. We also speak well of him and you know that our testimony is true. Now, a person's reputation gives them credibility. There are times when we've all seen it happen, a person's reputation may be better or worse than their real character, 
But most times their reputation has been well earned. Not all of the time, but most of the time that's true. And that's why Paul in his letter to Timothy said that a leader must have a good reputation and outsiders must understand also that reputation. They must see this person living up to what they say. Henry Ford said, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. In other words, only action and accomplishment will give a person a good reputation. Solomon said, a good name is more desirable than great riches. Why is that? Because a good name is hard to get and it's hard to hang on to. So when someone over the course of time is holding a good reputation, is well spoken of, then you can put a lot of stock in what they say. Not always. Don't put your total faith in what they say. But you can take a lot of notice. Now, this applies in all situations, particularly financial advisors and doctors and those sorts of people and employers and church leaders and so on. You need to see that in action. Take a look at their name and see what they have earned for themselves. Another reason a good reputation is very important is because of the time factor. You see, it's very easy to make a good first impression. It's easy to even impress people over the first couple of months of any appointment, whatever it might be that you've appointed to, a new job, a ministry role, whatever. But if you are to keep that impressed situation going for 10, 15, 20 years, that takes character and integrity and reputation. So choose very carefully to be influenced only by those people who have a good reputation among others. It's likely to be a sound test, not always, but likely. You know, life is too complicated for us to make it on our own. We need leadership. We need good examples to follow. We need teachers, we need coaches to train us and motivate us. And we all are influenced by others, either inadvertently or intentionally. Will you be a product of your surroundings, your culture, or people who happen to bump into you and say something, or will you choose intentionally to listen to some things, to discount another, and to have a proper filter going through your mind? I encourage you, look out for those who care about you. Look out for those people who walk the talk. Look out for those people who have an earnest, good reputation, and discount too much influence from others. That doesn't mean you don't relate to them, you don't uh, minister to them, you don't share with them, but you don't be influenced. You make a clear line of influence. And if you do that, you're likely to be able to grow in Christ and understand the foundations for a good life. Well, John closes, as he has before, with a very personal assurance. He says, I have much to write to you about, but I don't want to do with pen and ink. He says, I've got this urgent letter off. I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. And so we come to the end of the four urgent messages. Love is the priority. Love leads to reconciliation. Then you take responsibility to contend for your faith and not say, other person has got to be my strength. No, you be strong in the faith with God yourself. And then be influenced for good, for God, by making intentional choices that are sound and wise. These are urgent messages for us to hold on to if we are to thrive. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the challenge of your word. We thank you that you are the God of all love, all reconciliation, all care, all responsibility. And thank you today as we come to this important area that you are the God who brings influences to bear in our lives. And I pray that we may intentionally place ourselves under good influences, under those that will be a blessing, not a curse. Lord, guard us from being totally bound up or 
um, manipulated or maneuvered or dictated to by others who have agendas that are broken, that are hurtful. And Lord, we need to take responsibility for that ourselves. So help us on that journey. If we need to find a mentor, if we need to join a group, if we need to seek out some counsel, help us on that, Lord, I pray. That we might be people who thrive better And as we come up to this life one month where we look at people attending this conference, many who are doing well and just want to discover more hope and experience God more, some who may be broken and need to find the recovery in life and the restoration that you provide, we ask that you may cause godly influences to come upon their lives. For any here today who are struggling and yearning for that sort of influence, I pray you will bring across their path someone who will be their mentor, their support group, and Lord, may they grow in the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and bless us as we sing and celebrate how good you are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.